Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My pleasure to be on. Now, Dr. Shabir, the Muslim community is reeling from the London attack, you know, mm. where, which killed a family uh, of four individuals. Plus, there's another boy who's injured um, severely in the hospital. Um, I believe he's recovering now. Uh, so, Dr. Shabir, what were your thoughts when you found out about what happened? It's totally shocking. Um, even though incidents have happened one after another, we don't expect the next one. And, and the next one is just as shocking as, as before. And this one is particularly shocking. You know, we've had incidents where, you know, for example, in the Quebec City Mosque, uh, some people were gunned down while they were there just to pray. Mm -hmm. um, we had the incident where at, at a mosque in Rexdale, Ontario, um, uh, someone who was volunteering there, um, supervising entrance into the mosque during the pandemic situation, um, his throat was slit. Mm -hmm. um, the horrific yeah. mm -hmm. uh, act of terrorism and hate and violence and Islamophobia. Um, and uh, recently there was a mosque in the downtown area that received a warning by email. Um, the email said something like, you know, we, we are ready to execute something like what was done in New Zealand. We're just gathering our weapons and, and getting ready and using a lot of foul language, expressing a lot of hate. Mm -hmm. uh, that mosque had to close down for a while, uh, while police was in investigating until, you know, things could return to a calm. But as soon as it returns to a, a seeming calm, uh, then we hear something like this, you know, this is horrific. Imagine, uh, you know, just a family going out for a Sunday evening stroll, um, enjoying the, you know, the, the nice warm weather. And, um, and the, during the COVID, that's what people do, right? Because yeah. there aren't that many options in terms of how to entertain yourself and have a good time. Mm -hmm. So many families go out and have walks. And this is what happened as a result. Yeah, so it's totally shocking. Um, you know, it's totally unexpected uh, in, in Canada. Canada, I mean, uh, we, we, we get a lot of um, good responses from our neighbors. Can I tell you something about that? Sure. Yeah, so we have over the last uh, few days uh, received uh, many um, uh, many ways in which, I mean, we, we've seen many ways in which people have been expressing their love, their sympathy, their care, and so on. One neighbor uh, sent us a, a nice card um, expressing a sympathy and love. Um, uh, a church nearby sent uh, a, a, a nice uh, pot of flowers. And uh, someone passed by and, uh, you know, had flowers nicely wrapped and came and, and delivered to us. Of course, our mosque is mostly closed during the pan uh, due to the pandemic. So, you know, they, if they catch us, they catch us within the couple of hours that we are here. Um, it, and... Um, we um, we get many more messages by email and and by phone calls and so on. Um, speaking of churches, uh, we have uh, had uh, several messages from various pastors and leaders of churches. Um, we have had um, um, messages from rabbis uh, from more than one uh, synagogues. Uh, we have uh, received uh, more, more uh, speaking of neighbors as well, uh, we have received even more um, accolades from, from neighbors. One um, neighbor said that we're actually a group of neighbors and we're trying to reach you guys because we want to help in whatever meaningful way we can. If we, if we can stand in front of your mosque as people are coming in and out to make sure that you guys are safe. If, uh, if anyone feels they need someone to escort them as they come to the mosque or leave the mosque, especially if it's at late at night, they, they want somebody to walk with them to the subway or something like this, we're willing to do that. Um, I, uh, on my way to the studio, uh, uh, someone phoned me and said he's from one of the churches in, in the neighborhood and um, I had to keep the conversation short because I was driving. Uh, but basically he wants to bring a, a, his folks to um, hold up a sign saying we love Muslims. Mm. Um, and uh, uh, we have received messages from, you know, levels of government, our uh, local MP and MPP. Uh, they've all called to and uh, unwritten to express their uh, sympathy and support for Muslims at this difficult time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's great because uh, like many, many Muslims have been tearful, you know, crying. I've seen people crying. I've heard pe of people not being able to do their work because they're just so 
worried and concerned about what's going on. Um, people are not sure what to tell their children or if they should tell their children, depending on their child's temperament. Yeah. Um, you know, I went hiking one day and I th and and we were praying and I thought, you know, anybody could do anything to us while we're praying because we're defenseless. You know, I could hear, you know, when you go hiking, there aren't that many minority, visible minorities around. It's usually, you know, just the average white folk, you know, hiking. Mm -hmm. So when we were praying, I, I thought, I heard some noises behind me and I thought anybody could do anything and we would be completely defenseless, unable to even see what, you know, if they're attacking. So these thoughts come into your mind. You know, I, I heard people saying, I don't know if I'm, I, I feel comfortable walking you know, down the sidewalk anymore with my child with my children, because who knows what could happen. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have said um, maybe I should, you know, I had a thought of removing my headscarf, uh, you know, just so I could look like anyone else, right? So all these things are going through people's minds. I think it's a, it's a really it's really sad that it has come to this. Yes, what I recommend for for Muslims is to walk a, a balanced line between um, paranoia and and uh, complacency. Uh, so you know, if each of paranoia and complacency is uh, is an extreme, and and we should take the balanced position in between. So if you allow me to explain what I mean by this, uh, paranoia is obviously an an unreasonable fear, fearing just you know <laughs> without any good reason, and. Uh, um, Complacency is just simply the, the, in this situation, just the thought that, okay, nothing is going to happen, everything's going to be okay. No, no, you know, nobody's going to harm us. So, but of course, you have no guarantee of that. Uh, so the, the balanced position is to say, okay, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to be a Muslim uh, according to how I feel safe to be a Muslim. And uh, because, you know, there is this adjustment in Islamic law. Like if you have fear, and then uh, you know, fear is one of the things like necessity that that obviates some of the Islamic restrictions. So you can't you can't do some evil because you you have fear, but but you can um, relax some of the some of these stipulations in, mm -hmm. in Islamic law because of a situation of fear. Uh, like for example, our fear a prayer that is actually called the prayer of fear, so atul khawf in mm -hmm. Arabic. So it, you know you have adjustments to the prayer, uh, so you can get through it quickly in case you might be in a situation of, of danger. So so there are adjustments that we can make. But in any case, the the important thing is to feel that that we are doing uh, something right in this situation. Uh, we're not succumbing to paranoia. Um, on the one hand, and we're not acting um, in a lackadaisical manner. On the other hand, we're not complacent, but we're walking a fine line in between. We're doing what is safe, what is known to be safe, what is obviously safe in the situation, um, and, and perhaps a little bit more, because we, we don't want to um, fall back into in, you know, um, like reclusiveness, and then uh, that means uh, the you know the attackers win because if they if they have in in mind that that Muslims have no share in the public sphere, and then Muslims uh, as a result of one or two or three or four attacks, you know, start cowering in, in their homes and they and they do not interact with society. Well, Muslims will no longer be seen, which perhaps is one of the objectives of the attackers. We don't want to see Muslims. Mm -hmm. So Muslims have to be out there and uh, and they have to be out there for the public good. The Quran says, Kuntum khayra You are the best nation that has been raised up for humankind. That's in Surah 3 verse 110. So we have to be out there for humankind. Uh, as we are getting all these messages from people saying, we want to perform these acts of kindness for you, we should be out there performing acts of kindness for other people. And, and we have a lot of opportunities in this time of pandemic, where you know, some people uh, may not be well enough to go out and, and get their own groceries. Somebody may have to observe a period of quarantine for, you know, although they're basically healthy, but they might have been close to somebody who had uh, COVID. So mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you can offer to get the groceries for your neighbor. Uh, or do something for them, and and this way, you know, in this way, you will show uh, the uh, the, you know, the side of Muslims that we want people to recognize. That's mm -hmm. who we are. So, I think Muslims are also like really tired of having to show that. You know, yeah. it's like it's like you you're you feel like you have to prove yourself, 
um, rather than people just recognizing that you're just the average human being who deserves to be respected and protected. Yeah. Yes, but I would like to look at it from the perspective that uh, this is what Muslims are. Like, you know, th this, you see, if, if we, we say to somebody, okay, perform this random act of kindness, and the person is saying, you know, why should I perform the random act, act of kindness? But for, for the Muslim, like when we perform an act of kindness to somebody, we actually get uh, closer to God. Uh, we, we get that benefit of knowing that we are with God. Uh, even if the whole world is against us. And um, uh, God promises uh, all the, the bliss and reward of the life hereafter. So you're actually getting a reward for it, even if you think of it from a selfish point of view, I want to get some reward for this. Uh, but it, it also brings out the person that, that you are. That, you know, that, that's, that's, who you, that's who we are as Muslims. That's what we have to do. Just like we breathe and eat and, and drink, mm -hmm. uh, we perform acts of kindness just because that's who we are. It's not that we have to prove something to somebody, but in a situation like this, this is one of the benefits that will arise from it, mm -hmm. that, that people will come to know what Muslims are about. So, uh, the, you know, it's the opposite of reclusiveness. Don't be in your own ghetto. Don't, don't um, you know, uh, be like a uh, cling wrap that, that only sticks to your own. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, be out there and be jovial, uh, be an active part of society. And I think Muslims are, like I yes. think I, Muslims are very active in society yes. um, and, and they do help a lot. I notice that Muslims have a very charitable spirit. Mm -hmm. So they give a lot to uh, people in need uh, and they try to reach out and support people. We have in Mississauga, I noticed that we have some tables mm -hmm. where you can give free food and I see that some Muslims are managing one of the tables. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so Muslims are doing great things. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I would like to talk about Islamophobia a little bit mm -hmm. because, you know, we've, we would like to see, I mean, you mentioned that the political leaders have come and expressed their condolences, but we'd love to see a lot more from our political leaders to try and um, end Islamophobia. And there's so much more that they could do because sometimes I find that political leaders, you know, they have a certain rhetoric, you know, they, they say things, but it doesn't end up resulting in any action. And sometimes when it comes election time, they try to win votes and sometimes they sacrifice Muslims as a result, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So we'd like to see more action from political leaders. Exactly. The uh, Quebec bill you know. against, you know, wearing religious clothing and in, in the workplace has prevented many people, many, like for example, teachers have had to leave Quebec because they couldn't work anymore. Yes, and and it's not only the, this impact on the on the individuals that we can count, but but it is the whole uh, feeling that that this brings in, in in the country. It it establishes that you know the, the it, it makes a difference. Like it, it's it's giving a message about whether on the one hand this is a, a country that is welcoming uh, to people of diverse cultures, uh, or uh, whether you know it's like you know you you have to blend in or get out. Yeah. Uh, so what message are we uh, giving uh, in, in this way? And uh, by that, that message can have a rippling effect resulting in a, in a thing like this. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, some uh, people receive the news and, and, and they get impacted by this sort of uh, cultural presupposition in, in different ways. Uh, if somebody's already inclined towards, uh, you know, violence against Muslims, this may be a further factor that, that helps them to go over the edge. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Shabir, I, I guess it's not just political leaders, right? It's also, you know, the media sometimes portrays Muslims in a way, you know, if there's an attack and it, a Muslim commits it, it it's, it's kind of worded differently than if it was just the, the average white person, right? Um, so it, Muslims are seen as more violent, more aggressive, um, the terrorists, for example. Right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. When an incident, you know, happens and it involves uh, a, a Muslim uh, who is seen as the perpetrator, then, you know, quickly the ties start to be made between, uh, you know, this person and uh, terrorist groups, this person and some violent past and so on. Uh, whereas on the other hand, uh, if, you know, uh, the, uh, th there is a thing that people call white male privilege. 
Um, mm. So, you know, if uh, if it's the, the shoe is on the other foot, then, um, you know, it might be said that this person was uh, a good boy, but suffering from some mental challenges and, and so on. You know, we start exploring things from a different angle. So we want to know, like, what, what, what's the difference here and why this different angle? What is interesting in this case, Sophia, is that uh, from the inception, the police uh, said that this was a premeditated attack mm -hmm. on this family precisely because they were Muslim yes. and um, I, 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 I want to say something more about the family if you don't mind because sure. while uh, most Canadians by now being equally shocked by what has happened they, they have you know uh, paid attention to the news and they know the details uh, because our show is viewed on the web across the world uh, some people maybe may some people may be wondering what exactly happened in Canada so uh, if you allow me then to sure. tell you what you already know no, like uh, uh, here's a family of five, as you already mentioned, they were taking their evening stroll. They stopped at, uh, uh, at an intersection just waiting to cross the road. And uh, this guy came with his Dodge Ram vehicle and rammed into them. Mm -hmm. uh, deliberately, police uh, uh, say. And uh, later on, he, he stopped at, uh, an, at, a, at a shopping mall's parking lot and uh, he called out to a taxi driver nearby who was just taking a break from his routines uh, and, uh, and said to him, call the police, I just killed someone. Yeah. And he said, he was laughing. yeah, and yeah. he was laughing all mm -hmm. of the time and, uh, and he was saying, film me you know, at the time of the arrest. Mm -hmm. And, and it's reported that he had, he was wearing a helmet and combat gear. Mm -hmm. uh, so this may fit into the uh, profile of a, of a person who, you know, is a, is a pseudo combatant. Mm. Uh, he, he thinks himself to be like a hero. Um, so, uh, and I believe the taxi driver was not able to go back to work after that. Well, obviously, be, this it's will be traumatized. highly traumatizing yeah. for anyone. You know, mm -hmm. it'll be quite shocking to be involved in 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 that, at, even at that cursory level, to be brought so close uh, to a killer. So, as for the family, um, may God have mercy on them and give them uh, Jannah, uh, paradise, and and forgiveness. Uh, so, four of them died. Uh, the the grandmother, uh, in, who was seventy four years old. Uh, the married couple uh, in their mid 40s, and uh, that was uh, uh, Salman Afzal and uh, and uh, Madiha uh, Salman, their daughter uh, Yumna, and um, uh, so so the, so the four died. The survivor that you mentioned is a young boy. He's only nine years old. And, uh, you know, the, the, while we are continuing to pray to God for his uh, quick and complete recovery, the, the sad aspect of this that is unchangeable is that, uh, you know, he will recover to the knowledge that he is uh, the only survivor in his family. He's lost his entire his, family's wiped out. Yeah, yeah. lost his sister, his uh, parents and his uh, grandma in that terrible um, act of violence. Yeah, we make dua for them. And, uh, you know, we all, have, we all have a part to play in ending racism um, and ending hate in our society. That's right. And everybody's got to do his or her part. I see that you're getting emotional, Dr. Mm -hmm. Bear. Yes. We'll leave it at that. Thank you. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at QuranSpeaks.com.